you could disable OJVM. So first option, you patch it quarterly. Second option, you disable it. And you could disable it with the mitigation patch. The mitigation patch is in all your environments, I think since 2018, whenever you have a patch bundle applied, or could be even since 2017. Uh, otherwise, for older, I don't hope that anybody is on an older patch level, but in case there's a one-off patch available, which brings the mitigation patch to your environment. You would use the mitigation patch in cases where you can't patch OJVM right now. So you know that there's a critical issue, but you have no option to patch at the moment or when you can't remove OJVM. So you know it's not used by my applications, but I need to do something. The mitigation patch is not rock rolling installable, but actually you won't care because it's in your environments anyways. You must disable the mitigation patch when you want to patch or when you want to upgrade your database. So when you use auto upgrade, we tell you, oh, wait a bit, there's the mitigation patch in place. You need to disable the mitigation patch because the mitigation patch, when it's on, it disables the Java subsystem. And when you want to patch or when you want to upgrade your database, the Java subsystem needs to be available if it's there, otherwise we can't upgrade it. There's a good MOS node explaining and when you go to the upgrade block, you find a lot of blog posts. So try, just type in OJVM, uh, like things, things to know, or do you need the mitigation patch in root and all PDBs? So I explained just a few weeks ago how to apply the mitigation patch correctly and provision it with new PDBs right out of the box. Now, how do you enable the mitigation patch? What does that mean? So you run a script, dbms jdef.sql, and that brings now in the functionality of the mitigation patch in your database. And the functionality is used in the second call. You disable the Java subsystem now. So you say dbms java -dev disable, And when you disable the Java subsystem, the security issues don't affect you anymore. Because if the Java subsystem is disabled with that call, I can't do any harm by misusing OJVM security issues. So that's good. Only before you patch or before you upgrade, you must make sure that you enable the Java subsystem now again. Because otherwise, even for dependent patches, it could be that a component is depending on Java VM. And when that component applies a patch, and the Java subsystem is disabled, that patch apply will fail. So you need to be sure before you patch, before you upgrade that you enable the Java subsystem again, and afterwards you disable the Java subsystem again. It's very important to disable the Java subsystem also in the PDB dollar seed to ensure when you provision fresh PDBs and you expect them to have also Java subsystem disabled. So you need to make sure that you apply the mitigation patch. If it's on there, it's also in a PDB dollar seed. Otherwise, what would happen is you have five PDBs, you have the mitigation patch, it's available, and you disable the Java subsystem, and now somebody's provisioning a new PDB, and the mitigation patch is active in there, but the Java subsystem is enabled. So instead of going into every new fresh PDB, you would make these adjustments to the PDB dollar seed, and then a newly provisioned PDB will have the Java subsystem out of the box disabled. You can enable it later on if you need to. Just be aware when you want to patch, you need to enable it. The third option would be remove OJVM from the database. So our OJVM colleagues don't like that recommendation, but in some cases, it's the only way. Uh, and honestly, um, as we may explain in one of the follow-up seminars about upgrade speed, the less options, the less components you have in your database, the faster your upgrades run. So if I take on just my upgrade classes, uh, I would strictly recommend and say, hey, have only the options you really need in your database. And by not having the option, you don't care about the security potential of that option. 
you can safely remove OJVM. It's possible, it's explained in these two MOS nodes. What you do in these two MOS nodes is you simply, they're called safe repair and reinstall. So fully politically correct here, uh, but you just stop after removal because both no MOS nodes describe how to remove OJVM completely. And then you stop at this point and you don't reinstall and then OJVM is gone. You can also go to the upgrade block. So the link below here, Java VM and XML cleanup in the database gets you to the upgrade block where I explain how to remove components from the database correctly, because sometimes it's not in the documentation or it's in different places. Some removal instructions are a MOS nodes like here. You won't find anything in the official Oracle documentation how to remove OJVM. So in that case, it's in the MOS node. These are the options and decide what fits best in your environment.